Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. This video here is going to be my first review and demonstration on the FLG4, the finishing line gun. It's the FLG670 is the model number. So I just purchased this gun, it's brand new, straight out of the box. Um, I'm going to do a review and demo for primer. I'm also going to do one for base coat and also one for clear coat. So it's a HVLP gun which is high volume, low pressure. And basically that means that these holes here are a pretty big size compared to some of the other spray guns that you can get. Um, so the gun came with a brand new regulator. I was pretty impressed about that. I didn't actually know that it was going to come with one of them. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be using 1.8 for primer and in the following weeks you'll be seeing the uh, base coat color and the clear coat uh, review and demos. So it's, I think it's a pretty good gun. Um, Without using it, it looks nice, it seems well built. It definitely does seem a little bit uh, cheaper made than the GTI or the Tecna Pro and Pro Lite. Um, these ones are made in Taiwan or China um, compared to the English, the UK, which is where the Pro Lights are made. So they definitely just sort of do feel a bit better in the hand. Um, but as far as the DIY guy goes, I'd say it's a pretty good setup because You've got, you can change your fluid tips here. All you have to do is take that off and you can, um, you can take, change this fluid tip here. You can turn it into a base coat, clear coat gun and you can also use it as a primer gun as well. Uh, 1.8 is best for primer. 1.3 would be color and clear. If you're using some thick uh, 2K or something, you might want to even throw that 1.5 on. So here we go, we'll uh, give you guys a uh, look at how it runs. I'm going to be using some Concept Primer today. We've got some, this is actually an Australian made primer here. Pretty happy with the um, results from this stuff actually. Looking at it, it sort of looks cheap, um, and it is cheap, but it performs well. So that's the main thing. We're able to save a couple of bucks on our primer kit, yet get a good quality primer. So right from the start, I found this gun actually struggled a little bit uh, with the thicker primer that I'm using here. Uh, this primer, that concept primer there, it's uh, quite a thick primer. I still did thin it out to around 10% and the gun's still just uh, putting it on a little bit slow. Now, for this first coat, obviously I'm going pretty quick because I don't like to put my first coat on too heavy. It can end up, uh, you can have some uh, shrink back and swell uh, swell ups and stuff like that if you do end up um, putting that first coat on too wet. So there, that's the reason I put it on um, a little bit lighter on that first coat. But um, pressure settings around 10 PSI. And um, I decided, because I really want to get some build on this. This is a red, uh, restoration job that I'm doing here. So I decided I don't want to thin it out much more. So I ended up just struggling on and just um, just smashing that primer on low pressure, um, and it turns out I got the material on there quite well. Um, however, it's not the best primer gun I've used so far. Now I'm yet to use it for base coat and clear coat. Um, I decided to edit this footage up while it's all fresh in my mind, uh, the experience of the gun, and um, yeah, it, it's not my best primer gun, put it that way. I've got the Air Gunza AZ-3 um, with the 1.8mm tip on that as well and I tell you what, that gets the primer on twice as nice and I've actually decided to include a little bit of footage, just one or two coats um, of the AZ-3 at the very end. If you guys wanted to hang around you can um, just have a bit of a uh, comparison between the two. Um, I haven't by no means written this gun, gun off yet. Um, I'm yet to use it for base coat and clear coat. I'm going to give, as I mentioned before, the 1.5 and the 1.3 a review and demo in their own right. So I'm going to give it a review and demo for clear and base as well. So, HVLP spray guns. Don't forget, unless you've got a high CFM compressor, you will struggle to uh, run this gun at a consistent pressure because they do require high volume of air to um, keep them uh, to keep them running um, because of the size of those holes which I showed you guys just before. So, look, you can see that it, it is getting the primer on there. It just I like to get it on a little bit quicker, to be honest. Um, now, what ended up happening is I actually didn't really quite realise at the time what was happening. 
Um, I, because I was like, what the hell's going on? Like, there's little blobs of paint, sort of... It's, it's something like as if I didn't filter the paint. But I knew I'd filtered the paint, and it's a brand new spray gun, so there's no bits of uh, crap blowing out of the gun. It ended up getting big uh, load up of overspray on the actual air cap. And I'll slow it down and give you guys a look at the actual air cap. So I had to, midway through priming just these two doors, I actually had to stop and clean that air cap out just to um, remove all the overspray that had actually built up there. So you see here, just on each side there, and what was actually happening is that was actually getting too heavy and then falling off into my panel. So basically, look, it does say on the on the box for this spray gun, it does say light primers. Now this is a light primer, thin to 10% in a hot environment. So to me, it's probably underperforming as a primer gun. Um, thin it out a little bit more. Yeah, it, it actually works quite fine. That's this last coat here. This is my fourth coat. I did thin it down a further 5 or 10%. I just just uh, guessed it just when it looked nice on the stick. Uh, I thinned it down that bit more, and it's actually going on much nicer. So the way I did this car, you can see in the background, the body of the car is actually behind me. And um, uh, I just thinned it down that little bit more when I was doing the body of the car. It came out much nicer. Um, the only thing that you, you sort of lose a little bit of build as you thin it down, which is why I originally didn't want to. So... Um, the price of the gun, it's it's reasonably priced for what you get. Um, it's I got it for I think it was around 170 US dollars, which uh, calculated up to about 230 Australian dollars, and uh, I paid to get it shipped over from America too, which is I think it was around 30 dollars American, which turned to about 45 Australian or something like that. So all up uh, delivered to my door, it cost me 270 Australian dollars, and this is. The American model. Now, as you may have noticed, this is the Air Gunza AZ3 that you see me. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going to give you guys a look at the Air Gunza. This is exactly the same primer, same thickness, and it's just breezing through. It's getting it on a lot wetter and a lot nicer. So, um, for a primer gun, I wouldn't go if, if for this gun. However, wait up for the following couple of reviews and demos don't give up on this gun yet anyway so that's it for this review and demo thanks for watching and this has been another gunman production goodbye